Hey, this is Great Dane. I'm at 343 Labs. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create a melodic bass line using 808 audio samples and how to process them to make them stand out in the mix. All right, so here we go. I got a little bit of a chord progression going. Um, if you want to know how to build chord progressions easily, go check out my other video for 343. Um, I'm going to just skip it over it in this one, but essentially we have a root position chord progression in E major here. Um, so we'll stick with the root position for now, and this is going to be our um, guiding force as to what our bass needs to do to follow this progression. So let's give it a listen. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is duplicate this MIDI chord progression onto a new MIDI track and essentially delete everything except for the bottom note. And then we'll put it in a little bit of a lower octave. And this is what this bass line is gonna sound like with the chords. So if we wanted to leave it as MIDI, we could just leave it there and kind of process this new synth bass as our bass line and call it a day. Uh, what I want to do is recreate this bass line with 808s and audio samples because 808s are um, very powerful and can, um, they just, they make the song hit a little bit differently than a, a synth bass would. Um, so essentially we'll use this as a reference. We'll call this our bass reference track, reference. Uh, clip. So what I want to do is make my 808 audio sample sound like this. So essentially I want my 808 audio bass line to be hitting those notes to reinforce the chord progression. Um, I found this really big 808 sample. A lot of a lot of like doing this right comes down to the 808 sample that you're gonna use. I like this one because it's really long. That's really helpful because I like to leave my 808s unwarped. Um, a lot of times when you warp your 808 samples, they start to push and pull in weird ways and you get these interesting transients that you might not have wanted. So uh, yeah, I like really long 808 samples. I also like that it's very stable. It doesn't like have a weird like kick transient at the beginning. It's just one big uh, sausage and it stays in one place. It does it. A lot of 808s are going to do like pitch bends, like do like kind of like things that will mess with the tonality of your chord progression. So we want stable sustained long 808 samples. This is the Uzi something something 808, which if you know anything about those producers, they're gonna be, they're gonna kill it on the sample game. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just listen and try to do this by ear and just listen to the notes I'm trying to hit. So bah, the easiest way would just be to use your mouth, just like literally try to sing it out loud. Duh. If you have trouble doing this by ear, you can also use the um, labeling to try to figure it out. So with this, the note that we're shooting for is B and this sample, this Uzi something something 808 is tuned to F. So you could just use, use math and figure that out, right? Another really good thing to keep in mind is when we're tuning 808, sometimes it's really hard to tell if the note is right because it's so low. So it's really good to have that shift up and down key handy, shift up just to kind of check out the notes in multiple octaves. So shift up, let's hear what that sounds like. We'll do it again just to hear it in a higher octave. It sounds perfect. So in that case, I didn't even really use my ears, I just used math, right? I, I figured out that the original, the note I was going for was B, the sample was labeled F. Um, I, I'm hesitant to do it based, I, I usually will just do it by ear because some things are labeled wrong. Sometimes synths say you're on a B, but you're actually on something else. So always double check with your ears, make sure that like you're listening and making sure that the notes are actually sounding right, not just assuming that the labeling is right. So there we go, there's gonna be our first note, uh, which is a B, and I'll just extend it so it's really long. So we have one 808 per chord. And I'll do the rest by ear, so I won't even check. Let's see. Da. Sure, we'll leave it.
it up in that sort of high octave. Let's do it again. Da. Da. All right, there we go. So that's that is going to be the um, the basis of what I'm about to do with these 808s. Will be those four notes. Um, let's hear what it sounds like first off. I'll turn off the MIDI bass. I'll turn on the 808 bass. I'll turn it down a little bit because it's really big. So here we go. Cool. I'm not sure about those octaves, but they're all the right notes. Uh, so what I want to do now is add a little bit of a drum beat because usually I want my 808s to be following some sort of kick pattern. So I'll basically just put down a kick and a snare um, and then we'll come back and move these 808s around so that they do the pattern of that kick pattern. So BRB. <laughs> Alright, cool. So now we've got the basis of a drum beat going. We got the kick pattern, a little bit of a, a little hat action and a clap on the halftime spot. So one, two, three, four, right? So the basis of a nice little trap beat. Um, what I want to do is basically move these bass um, 808 audio samples around so that they follow the kick pattern. So first I'll do that and I'll just leave them on the octave that they're on. So I'm using the grid command one and two to uh, make my grid smaller or bigger depending on what rhythm I'm trying to like land on. So in this case uh, I'm using 16th notes that seems to work for this one. And we'll make sure that we stay on the pattern. There we go, there's our first three. Cool, and I'm using fades to make them not just be full force 808s the whole time. I wanna have a little bit of an intro and an outro for each audio sample. And then we'll come to the second bar. And remember, each of these is on a new note, so we don't wanna, it might be even good to color code them so we know that they're different. That works. And right now I can kind of just do this just by looking at it, just wherever the, the kicks happen, that's where the bass needs to happen. All right, there we go, let's check it out. That's gonna be, um, yeah, the bass notes hitting on the right notes with the kicks. So there we go, it has a lot of power. Um, I love that 808 like powerful feeling that you get. It's a little bit different than, I mean, we can also like make synths that do similar things, but I just, I feel like it hits different when it's an audio sample of an 808. That's kind of the main meat of what, I, what we're gonna do. Um, the only thing left to do would just be to really fine tune those fades, like really fine tune how those fades are gonna interact. I think um, a lot of the power of bass lines comes from the the space, when you, basically when the bass goes away, like the, the push and pull of lots of bass and then no bass, right? So honestly, if you use the fades really effectively and really um, aggressively, your bass line can pop out even more. It'll feel more aggressive even, if, even though there's less bass, so. Uh, and also we can manipulate octaves too. Remember that shift up and down. So maybe on this third note, we go down an octave. So we start. And if you have your um, internalized scale, you know, if you're feeling kind of like what the, the scale is doing, we could actually have the notes move as well and have them go to like passing tones. So we can have this one go down. So it's like a half step down.
You gotta really make sure you have the right note. It's so easy to be a half step off. See, I was about to do the wrong note if I didn't isolate that and put it up an octave. <laughs> Let's just listen to the drums and the bass together. Clean, that sounds super good. Um, the last step is just basically a little bit of bass processing to make them pop out a little bit more. I used a really aggressive 808 sample that's already pretty popping. It's already, you know, coming through the mix very well. Um, but if you're using a more subtle, like sine wave type of bass, or, you know, you just wanna kinda take it and make it sound a little bit different, um, my favorite two audio effects to use would be the saturator and an EQ. So what we're gonna do is essentially give this 808 some more presence, some more mid-range, some more distortion with the saturator. So let's just go like aggressive with it. Let's boost it up 10 dB on the drive. Um, then we're gonna use this EQ to the right of it and tame it back down. So we could take out a little bit of that low end because it's gonna be really, really popping now. It's already super big, now it's gonna be even bigger. And then on the right side, we could even give it uh, we could cut off the highs as well and just kind of fine-tune exactly where we want that middle of the bass to feel like it's hitting. And just try to make sure you're not peaking because obviously these are big audio samples. We can always manipulate the output here. Um, keep an eye on your output, your overall output gain. There we go, nice, thick bass line. Um, you can kind of keep keep manipulating it until you feel like you found that perfect sweet spot where it's, it's letting the bass do its thing on the high octaves and on the low octaves. This seems pretty good to me. Maybe one little last trick I'll show you is the erosion um, effect. So if we put the erosion effect on here with some noise, So there you go, there's a, a nice melodic bass line with an 808 sample that follows my chord progression. Let's, let's listen to it with the chords. So there you go, that's a really easy way to create a melodic bass line with 808s to make it more bouncy, more fun, and have them pop out in the mix. Thanks for watching, this is Great Dane at 343 Labs. See you next time.